Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another WIS Technology Tutorial. In today's lesson, I'm going to be talking about tracking hours with Google Sheets, Forms, and awesome tables for Google Sites. So what you're looking at here is a very simple Google Site um, with an awesome table gadget embedded. Now, something you should know about awesome tables is that you can enable something known as row-level permissions, which allow your users to only see the data that's relevant to them. So this means that I can have multiple students submitting the exact same form and this gadget or the script that's associated with this gadget will parse only the data, not really parse, but it'll recreate a table of only the data related to the person who's currently logged in. Okay, so I'm logged in as Anderson at gtrainerdemo.richardaanderson.org. And what this site is telling me is the number of hours I've spent on each activity and how many I have left to go. So if the target, let's say the target was 40 hours in this case, um, I can easily see that I've done six hours total here. So it's telling me I've got 34 to go. So this last column is just will change as more hours are submitted. And I will demonstrate that here as we go along through this tutorial. So this is kind of the end result. Let's go back to the very beginning. Here is the Google form that I created for uh, this project. Uh, it's a three question form. I'm simply asking uh, three required questions. One is the name, uh, the activity, and then the number of hours spent on that activity. And I even enabled some data validation, so it has to be a number greater than zero, just to avoid someone typing, for example, the word two rather than putting in a number. Because I'm going to be doing some calculations uh, with the numbers that are submitted in the response sheet. I also made sure to check the require the G Trainer demo login to view this form. This is kind of my domain name. So I will also want to collect the username. This is also the email address of everyone who submits this form in my domain. This is what enables the awesome table uh, sort of permission, row level permission to function. Because um, I'm basing the permissions on this particular column in the response sheet. So let's jump over now to the response sheet. Um, as you can see, this is where all of the information lands. Okay, uh, You'll notice here that I've installed the copy down add-on. All right, This is available from the add-on store. It's super useful. Highly recommend grabbing this one. You'll need it for several other uses of Google uh, Sheets, but that's the copy down add-on. And then my master row um, is actually where three formulas lie that are being copied down every single time a form is submitted. So the first one is um, this one here in F, uh, F3, okay? Here we have this formula sum if, now let me explain this formula briefly. So it's going to sum if, and if I look at this, I'm looking at a range, okay? So the range is the username. So I'm saying sum if this range is equal to C3, which happens to be this email address, okay? So remember that this is going to copy down, so the next time this appears, this will become C4. Don't forget these dollar signs, because this is going to keep our range um, at that it won't copy the range down. The range will stay the same. And then the last part is the actual range that I want to sum the numbers of. So in this case, I'm going to sum all of the numbers in column E where Anderson at G Trainer Demo uh, is the username, okay? So as you can see here, there's only three of them here. So it's going to say, okay, I need to sum this two plus this two plus this two. And it's putting in a six right here. Okay, so that's how it's building, it's building that right there. 
So now the hours needed, um, this is simply the target hours, all right? This is just 40 hours, I'm saying, is our goal. I could change it, but I'm grabbing that from G2, all right? I'm saying G2, this is our target, and I'm turning this into a formula by saying G2 is equal, uh, or, or G3 is equal to G2, okay? And then the last one is simply the countdown mechanism, okay? So this is taking the total hours in G2, okay? And it's going to subtract F3, this one right here. So basically, the first number in the subtraction um, problem is always going to be 40, and it's just going to subtract um, the total hours completed, okay? So that's why I'm getting the 34 in all of these columns. So, and as you scroll down, you can see this is working for every new student that submits the form. So here's student one, right? Um, we've got a total of 4.5 hours submitted. Therefore, the remaining hours is 35 to five. So this is worry-free. I know that my countdown mechanism is properly subtracting the hours. Okay, now in my next tab here, I have an awesome table. This is sort of me preparing the data to, to, be, display, to be displayed on the Google site. So in A3, this is a simple query. So I'm going back to the response sheet and I'm pulling all of the raw data of just the columns that I want to display in my awesome table. All right, so this is what you're seeing on the Google site. And then across row one, I simply retyped in the, the headers. And then awesome tables will um, automatically put in these filters uh, for you. So if you don't want these filters, you have to specify no filter. So I put in no filter in all of these columns except for the username. And in the username column, I put in the word permissions. So this is telling Awesome Tables to only display the relevant data concerning the student who's logged in. Um, so right now I'm logged in as me, so when I visit that Google site, that's why I see only this account. But if I were to go over to the Student 1 account, uh, that information would be displayed for that student. And I will sign in uh, to that account as well so you can see how that works. So let me talk a little bit about the proxy script. Okay, so this is the mechanism that allows your uh, awesome table to do the row level permissions. And this is a simple copy and paste. I didn't do anything differently to the script. Um, it's available uh, on the awesome tables documentation. You will find a link uh, to a presentation about uh, row level permissions and you can just copy the script from there. Um, where you paste this is actually on your your sheet, okay? On your, anywhere you want on your Google Sheet. You go up to Tools, Script Editor, and you plop it right in there. So once you paste it in there, first thing you need to do is you have to run this do get uh, function. This will trigger the authorization of the app to run. So you need to do that first and then once you've done that you come over to publish and then you need to deploy it as a web app. So you click publish, deploy as a web app, um, make sure you're exiting or executing the, the function as yourself but then allow anyone within your organization to run the app, okay, or have access to the app, essentially. So, and once you do that, um, you'll, you'll be given a URL like this, and you'll need this when you're configuring the awesome table. So, keep this in mind. We're going to go look at the configuration of the awesome table right now. So, Back to where we started at the Google site, um, I'm going to turn editing on and we're going to look at the configuration of this awesome table. If 
you've never worked with awesome tables before, you can actually um, um, insert it from the insert menu, more gadgets, and it's just down here a bit, right here. This is where the awesome tables are located. But let's go ahead and look at the configuration settings. So right away at the top, it's asking for the URL of your Google Sheet. So I simply went back to my sheet, and I tend to go to my Awesome Table tab that I, I like to name Awesome Table just so I know which one I'm working with. Highlight that, uh, paste it in there, great. Then you got to make sure the sheet name is correct, right? So this is a Awesome Table. And I verified, yes, this is called Awesome Table. That works. That's fine. Now the range. OK, so what columns am I going to be displaying on that sheet? Well, because I've already decided what I want to display on this sheet, I want all of these columns available. So A through F, uh, these are the columns that I want to display. So that's why I have A1 through AF. And I've, I've saved this, OK? And then if I scroll down a little bit, um, I do want to include a scroll bar in case I have lots of students who are submitting to this one, uh, one form. I want them to be able to scroll down and see all of the activities they've submitted and the hours that they've contributed. And then I've unchecked these boxes to display the title just because I don't really feel it's necessary that I, I need to have a border um, around the gadget or a title on the gadget. So that's good. Under the view settings, there's nothing, uh, nothing really to change here, except if I wanted to have more items appear on that first screen. But in this sample, 15 is, is more than enough to display. The format, um, I don't change anything here either. Uh, we're not really working with filters, but uh, the inside filter is basically um, this. This allows you to describe um, to put inside of the box sort of the subject you're filtering. Um, but we aren't going to worry about that right now. And then under the advanced parameter, okay, this is where we paste the apps script proxy URL, right? So remember when we deployed this guy as a web app, all right? We went publish, deploy as a web app. We got this URL. That's what's going here, okay? And we save it, and we're happy with it, and we notice now that because I'm logged in um, as anderson at gtrainer.richardaanderson.org, I get this. But let's just open up uh, for fun a new incognito window, and let's log in as one of the other students, all right? So let's just go to... Google Drive. So we're now logged in as student one. And what I'm simply going to do is copy this URL. All right, I'm going to copy this URL and paste it in this browser account. What you're going to notice is that the data being displayed will now be relevant only to student one, who happens to be Sally. So I hope this was enough to clarify a little bit of how you can maximize uh, the use of Google Sheets, Google Sites, Awesome Tables, and uh, row level permissions to sort of keep your students informed if they need to track hours or if you need to track hours for any given reason um, you can make them available to your students through this workflow so I know this was a little long tutorial but it's, it's a discussion that often comes up and I just wanted to share um, a strategy that I would apply to solving an hour tracking 
solution uh, or an hour, hour tracking problem like this one. Thanks for watching. Bye.